Hello, I'm here to do um, a quick video response to a hashtag um, Trick or Treat Tarot uh, by Mags Black, which um, I'll have her video linked down below. But this was just a fun, quick uh, eight prompt tag that uh, really gets into the season. So. The veal is lifting is the first prompt. And it is described as the deck that reveals mysteries and is esoteric, but I interpret the lifting of the veil as a deck that strips away all of the complicated esoteric symbolism uh, down to a point where you can feel the connections and knowledge. And the seasonal deck that does that for me is the Raven's Prophecy. Now, I use this deck year-round, but more heavily into the winter season. The images in this deck draw out the meanings in um, a more emotional or intuitive way, and it's done very cleverly. It has a way of leading the reader to the meaning in um, a poetic and personal way. For example, here in The High Priestess, it's not just a stranger looking at you but it's you being invited to look through the glass yourself. And again, uh, it's seen here in this image uh, where the hands are beckoning out to you, handing you yellow roses. This is one of my favorite world cards ever. Uh, it shows the world from our human point of view or our human perception down on earth. And it invites us to travel, to open ourselves up to all the things we don't know and that we haven't experienced yet. Um, rather than just being some, some person again or, you know, out in space looking down at Earth. I think the court cards are also done in this personal and poetic style. Here, this page of coins is just sprouting. And this image really embodies the energy of the page of coins to a T for me, but without just having a person standing there. And this is my favorite Queen of Wands. It's beautiful and can literally be anybody. And the Queen of Wands is my significator, and I often feel that the card is depicted too coldly and cruelly, but here the sword is not aggressively pointed or held, but placed in the water, and it's causing kind of a ripple effect, um, which gives it a sense of power and authority, but it's also immersed in emotion rather than devoid of it. I don't know if that made sense, but this Queen of Swords really, really speaks to me. Here we have a feeling of innocence and curiosity, but also of nostalgia and time passing by and things vanishing. Um, you know, like these bubbles are gonna pop, they're not gonna stay there forever. Uh, and this card reminds me of those photos where you see people holding the Eiffel Tower or playing soccer with the moon, where it's a matter of manipulating the subject to interact with an object in a seemingly impossible way. Because here the, the raven is much larger than the moon, but that could just be... Or uh, the way I perceive it is it's just your perception at that moment. In reality, the raven isn't really bigger. It's just probably closer to you than the moon, for example. Um, and now I'm just rambling. So <laughs> um, I need to stop here or this whole video is going to be just this deck. But yeah, it's a good one. So the second prompt is... The oops. The second prompt is the Geising Glow Up deck, which I understand as getting dressed up and ready to go out. So for this prompt, I chose the Roi de Vivre. I chose this because all the figures in this deck are dressed elaborately and they seem almost posed in the images. Uh, it just reminds me of getting ready, of putting on your face um, and your persona. Uh, for me, this deck has 
some sinister undertones and the idea that everyone is putting on a face and and an act definitely uh, makes this a darker deck for me. Next is the Stepping into the Dark deck, for which I chose the Al Goliath Tarot. This is the most difficult and disturbing card in the deck for me because I just can't do eye things. But all the images are black and white and different grays. They're often darker in theme. Here for the Eight of Swords, uh, there's a polar bear trapped under ice. And looking at it, I can just feel the desperate need for a breath of air. I've always lived near large lakes in Canada, and when I was three, I did fall into the hole in a frozen lake. Uh, luckily, my dad was there to pull me right out. But it's one of those things where you really need to be careful where you walk. Um, where walking around in the dark or without paying attention it just invites danger. But this beautiful shadowy deck has a way of bringing you through and out of the darkness. Uh, it's a deck that invites you to walk in the darkness but come back into the light a little better equipped and knowledgeable of your own shadows than, um, than you were before. The next prompt is the Haunted House deck, which having the Tarot of Haunted House uh, made this a no-brainer for me. This deck follows the character Raven uh, through this creepy house, and I won't spoil the story for you, but I love this deck, and I can see myself using it all year round. It's a beautiful storyteller in a film kind of aesthetic. It's quite dramatic and staged. And you see the kind of intentful lighting and posing in every image. Here in the Devil card, uh, the shadow is much larger and intimidating than the figure. And I've just, I've been really enjoying analyzing the lighting um, and the framing and the poses in, in these images. Yeah, I think there's a lot more to this deck than, than meets the eye. But anyway. Next is the Ghoulish deck, uh, for which I have pulled out um, my Triomphe de la Luna. The characters in this deck are kind of creepy and ghoulish looking. Some cards can be a little dark, so I thought it fit the prompt and the season. Though that being said, uh, the details in this deck make it a beautiful le reader year-round. Um, I just picked it because it has these kind of ghoulish, ghoulish creatures in it. Alright. The sixth prompt is the Knock Knock deck. For this prompt, I chose my newly acquired... Uh, Goetia, uh, Tarot in Darkness. Uh, this is a very new deck, one I'm not even sure how to pronounce yet, even. But it draws me in in a way no other deck has before. It just calls to me from the shelf, and I just want to be near it, holding it, flipping through it. Uh, so I'm enjoying learning from it. And uh, I do need to spend some more time with it. It's still in order, in the numbered order, not in the uh, 
traditional tarot order, if this will focus. Because I'm just getting to know this deck and I want to understand the order that it was presented in before I start rearranging it in my own way, <laughs> if that makes sense. But it's, um, it's definitely a very unique deck in my collection. So I'm looking forward to working more with it. The next prompt is the Tell a Joke deck, a deck that is the playful and cheeky friend. Uh, enter the Squid Cake Marseille. This is a fun, zombie-esque little deck. The people are pink and blue with kind of vacant eyes. Uh, they all appear kind of chill. <laughs> I love the um, the mug and the tea the teacup as the scales and justice and the wonky eyed sun. It's just one you can't take too seriously, and uh, it fits the aesthetic for this time of year. All right, moving on to the final prompt, uh, which is the candy deck, and for this one. I have chosen oh, my good old trusty Halloween tarot. The nostalgic art style and unapologetic Halloween theme brings me back to my childhood and it's just so sweet in the way it reads. Look at these little cute ghosts handing you a nice cuppa. Will this focus? Um, yeah, it is so, so sweet. Uh, there's this black cat, and, um, it features in every card. It kind of, um, gives it a kind of fine Wally vibe, which just makes me so happy to look at it and to find the cat. <laughs> uh, I absolutely love it, despite it being a very Halloween Deck. I can pull it for any reading, any time of year, whenever I want. An easy, sweet read. So thank you very much for joining me here today. It was a fun tag and I've linked the original video below. Take care everyone, stay safe and happy Halloween!